name is Bridie Morgan and I'm in, in Clare for 79 years. My name is Eddie Linehan and I, I suppose I should be better known nowadays as a storyteller, although when people meet me, the strange thing is, <laughs> they usually ask, how the fairies? How the fairies? Uh, because I suppose I have got to be known as a teller of fairy stories. I can't explain what they are. Lights, you just see lights. You see lights and you, you don't hear of different stories about people, do, do you know, damaging the forts and going to get in sick after it and cutting down the, cutting down the white thorn tree and getting, getting insane and that kind of thing after it. Oh, well, we had an experience, myself and my sister, with the, we had a fort near us below it all, and sure, there was something telling us our day to go into the, the fort and make up some kind of a playhouse in it. So we brought a few bits and pieces with us, and we brought rosary beads and all. We, we were kind of frightened, you know, when we were going in, we decided we'd bring the rosary beads. So we were inside for a good fight anyway. Man was calling us for the dinner. And we couldn't come out. And I don't know how we were, I don't know how we came out to the finish. But we went to get the rosary beads anyway. But there was no sign of the rosary beads. The rosary beads was gone. We never saw the rosary beads from that day to this. Well, we used to see a lot of lights there now, all right, you know, in the fourth. We used to see them from the, our own door, like. You wouldn't touch the brave now that did a job in the field and everybody left the fort, they wouldn't touch. We used to see all the lights there, sure, at different times. We would see the lights going round, like. Oh, but that's still going, like. We can see the lights all the time, in different places. Especially off the road there now. You could see a light at any time. Mm. That's a real bad area over there. There's so many people being killed there in that hill. Yeah, there is. Yeah. People have been killed on that hill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. By the fairies. Well, nobody knows, but sure something happened anyway. Yeah. I have heard of consequences for pe for people who have interfered with forts. The Black Book there, meet my book meeting the other crowd is, there's many stories in that of people who interfered with forts or fairy paths or bushes, fairy bushes, lone white thorn bushes. And the inter that interference was very severe either for their health or for their families or for God only knows what, but always negative for them. For example, not too far from here, there was a man who levelled the fort. It was a well-known case. And he had three daughters. Nice looking girls too, it seems. And uh, I, didn't interf I, I didn't inquire too closely about it because I'd be, I'd be regarded as interfering. Because too many people knew about it. And you have always to be sensitive about these things because you know, when the results are tragic, especially, you, you have to be careful. You have to be careful. But the man, he lived in the fort. In spite of what his neighbours were discreetly saying to him, because they knew damn well you don't do this if you have any sense. And neighbours normally don't have to tell you to do these things. You should know it yourself. But I suppose he was a bit greedy for land. Which again is stupid, because the amount of land that levelling a fort will bring you is not much. To be like levelling a Kylene, you know, a little children's burial ground. A thing you just don't do even though there have been a few people who have done that. And again, not, not become rich by doing it. But this man did it, and the three daughters, after he did it, shortly the three of them got sick. Now, it could be a thing that would happen anywhere. But doctors, do, doctor was sent for, because the sickness got worse and worse. And the doctor couldn't, couldn't explain it, and they were sent to hospital. And... The shot in the story, uh, they got medical attention, hospital, but uh, two of them died laughing. And the other one died crying. Now, one of the friars in Ennis, uh, from the friary in Ennis, was sent for. And he inquired what, what was done. And uh, 
Of course, it came out that the man had levelled the fort, and the friar, the friar, you know, the priest inside, said to him, look, you have to take the consequences. Now, you wouldn't expect that from a priest. But, of course, the, the friars inside, the Franciscans, were always much more respected than the ordinary clergy, especially for things like that. And a friar, if a friar was available, would always be sent for first. Because often they had advice to give that wouldn't be given by an ordinary clergyman. Or at least people felt so. And people, the three daughters died. As I said, two of them laughing and one crying. Now, cynics would say, of course, it was meningitis they got. Which could be, which could be. But I always wondered why it was that the three poor daughters were visited with the misfortune rather than the man who did the damage. But in any case, the, the, the damage was done and he paid the consequences. And that was a well-known story, not too far from here at all. But um, it was a warning. If warning, no warning was needed because everybody in the same senses in this country knows that you don't interfere with forts. There are too many stories, too many stories to tell you that you do that at your own peril. And have you ever known or heard of someone who has damaged a fairy fort? Well, I did, and I don't know what I did. I went straight into the, the mental hospital. He, uh, I can't name him either, I suppose. He was down in Rwanda, and the village of Rwanda, and he had a shop, and he had a bit of land over the road. And you're not supposed to t touch a, 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 no. a door in black, white, Garden three, you're not supposed to touch them if they're out the field on their own. They're kind of a fairy tree. And uh, he didn't he cut it down. And he went over home, he went off the head. And he was inside in the mental hospital for years and years and years. And I, I remember I know Tom Kinney up the road, our neighbour. Yeah, he, he cut down a tree one day over. And uh, he was after cutting it down, and there was a heap of earth in it. And he got the shovel to remove the earth off of the tree, like. And wasn't the shovel taken off his hand and put over across the, the, the road, the, road yeah. the yard? And uh, he got off in bed. When Bernie, his sister, called us at around two o'clock in the night. Oh. He was gone mad over in the room. And, and he was jumping out of the mm. bed and down around the floor and everything. So my husband, Dr. Mercy, and, and Kieran Casey, my neighbour, they went over and they had to stay all night with him. But they had to get the doctor into him anyway. But he hardly ever recovered after that either. But it was all, it was all this tree that he knocked on the, on the day, whether it was a fairy tree or what he touched. Well, he said that himself. He said that himself. The fairies got him. The, the fairies got him. Mm. But the, the shovel was taking him off him and it was put flying across the air. No, and he was very bad for years. But he was. He was. But you're supposed, if, they, if you leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. Mm. That's it, you respect each other and that's where it, you leave it. Yeah. Stories in the book, in the black book again, but I'll tell you the story. It was told to me only about four miles from here by a grandparent of the person it happened to. Uh, no, I'm wrong. It was told to me uh, a bit further uh, from from here. Did you ever hear of Gareth Barry, the famous piper, Ilan Piper? He was famous. Gareth Barry kept Ilan Piping uh, alive when Ilan Piping almost had begun to die out. He died in 1900 in, in the workhouse. <laughs> he died poor, like a lot of famous musicians do. He was blind. And he was famous in his own way, but not by the authorities in that. He used to go around from house to house to house. He has played funerals and he has played weddings. As I say, he never got rich from it, but he was very much respected by ordinary people. And they used to keep him, they used to feed him, and he'd go along to another house then. And that was at a time now when people didn't have much for themselves. But as we all know, it is poor people will share with you, whereas rich people will give you nothing. But this particular day in the summertime, Garrett came to a house and all the people of the house they were out saving the hay. It was fine weather. And husband and wife and children they were taking advantage of the fine weather to get the work done. Because if the rain came and the hay wasn't saved, well you know yourself what the consequences would be. They had nothing for the winter. And Garrett came in 
and there was a little child of about a year old in the cradle. And of course the mother said, look, she said, I need it out in the field. Any chance, Garrett, you, you'd mind the child? And of course he said he would. He'd be in the house at least. And that was great. She went off. The child was asleep in the cradle. And Garrett took out the pipes and he started playing the pipes softly by the fire. Open fireplace. Old style kitchen. And he was playing away there softly for a while. I mean, the child in the cradle sat up and said, he said, Garrett, that's fine music, but I have better. Now, this was a child of maybe 12 months old. And Garrett said, no, the child lay back in the cradle again. But when the people came home in the evening, Garrett said to the husband what had happened. Husband said nothing, only over he went to the fire. And uh, yeah, the shovel that he had used for putting in the coals of turning the ashes, he stuck it in and heated it up. And then over he went to the cradle and stuck the red hot shovel into the cradle. <laughs> and immediately the little child, so called, that was in the cradle, leapt out and out the door, ran out the door. Of course, you were no child at all. You were that child, he was a changeling. And, of course, the mother was shocked because she hadn't heard what Garrett had said to the husband. And, you know, she went, oh, my God. But a few minutes later, they had the scratching. At the <laughs> Just like the dog there was scratching a moment ago. She went to the back door and there was their own child lying at the back door. So only for Garrett being there, their own child was gone. The fairies would have him took. It was a changeling.